Hello and welcome back to the channel my friends. So glad to have you here at Meters Munich. So we are going to go on with another video on CDTM. So I know that a lot of people might struggle with the application process, especially with the essay, because I feel like motivational statement, you kind of get used to it over the years that you have to do one. So if you want tips on that, definitely check out the video with Aaron, uh, which is going to come up or I've already uploaded it, depending on when I do this, because he really can give you like the management team perspective. But I thought it would be super interesting to walk with a Centrelink through their essay. So not for you to copy it or something, the structure, but for you to kind of give, get a feel of how this could look like and just kind of picking a brain and just seeing, okay, how did they do it? So I'm super hyped to have Elvira Young with me, um, a good friend of mine who's gonna walk us through her essay. She's at the moment in Cambridge with CTM and she's gonna go to Berkeley as well. So incredibly, um, yeah, interesting episode for anybody who wants to apply. So check out the entire video. Welcome everybody back to Meters Munich. I'm super, super happy that I have a very close friend of mine, Elvira, with us today. Um, she's a Centrelink. She's at the moment in the beautiful Cambridge, as you may see in the background. And we're really going to talk today a little bit about the application and this inside perspective. So thanks so much, Elvira, for taking the time and um, talking the listeners through how it was for you. Yeah, always happy to help. So as people may know from kind of the videos, there are basically two parts. So the first one is kind of the statement of purpose where you talk a little bit about yourself. And then the second one is something which always changes, which is kind of an impossible question where it's just really kind of about understanding your thinking. Um, so let's start off maybe with the first one, the, the statement of purpose. So basically what it says is that please tell us why you want to join the program and specifically what you want to learn at CGTM. Furthermore, please tell us how you can contribute to CDTM based on your skills and personality. So, Elvira, how was kind of for you the process? Like, what comes to your mind? Like, when you when you read those questions, how how did you approach this? Well, I think in the beginning, it's always people are intimidated by the CDTM sometimes, thinking that it's impossible to get in or anything. But with this process, we just really want to understand who you are and if you know what the CDTM is about, and also really why you just want to join the CTM. This is not really to say, well, we don't want you in there. If we could, we would take everyone basically who is motivated and um, has the right mindset to do it. But given that we only can take 25 people per batch to make sure that it's very personalized, um, this is really just to help, help us understand why you want to join this program. And when I started, I was first thinking about well, what is this CDTM really about? And where do I see myself? Because even within the CDTM community, it's very diverse. There are lots of things you can contribute to um, and also lots of projects and internal stuff you can work on. So if you have the opportunity to look at the website, to look at their social media, to first get what kind of you know events we are organizing, what kind of things we're focusing on, I think that's a really good uh, way to start and learn more about the CDTM and kind of think about where you see yourself as well. Awesome. I think that's that's a really good place to start. I think there's so many, especially your your resources at the CDTM, but then also like the the ones with Adam where he really talks about like why they do the things they do it and and, and also the Q&As that, that can give you like a bit of an idea about what the spirit is like. And, and, and something he said, and I really like that, is that the point of curiosity and energy, which each Centrelink brings. And I think this is a very good way, both of these documents, to show that you are curious and, and how can you show that throughout your, your journey? Yeah, absolutely. And I think this is also, I mean, in the beginning, it seems like a lot, but maybe keep in mind that the CDTM can be very time intensive. So making sure that you invest the time in the beginning for the application also ensures that when you do join the CDTM that you know what you're getting yourself into and that this is the right program for you because not everyone would benefit from the CDTM as much as yeah um, if you don't feel like this is the right fit for you and so maybe also keep this in mind that this is a good way for you to understand if this is the right program for you. I really love that because I think like there is no judgment in the sense of if you want to invest that much time or not, like everybody has their own necessities and how their life is structured. And I think Michael said he invested like 20 hours or something um, in his in his application. I don't know how much it was for you, but I think definitely like 
yeah, just honoring that and, and, and investing the time is going to set you at least on a, on a better path than if you just write something up on the fly, probably. Yeah. And maybe for you also, um, both students and the CA, so the center assistants, read the um, applications. So this is also just to keep in mind that also other students who would think, do I see this person in the CT CDTM working with me together? Um, it's, it's also a big step. So, you know, if you just write something very generic, something you've written to other companies, um, we can tell that. So we are more interested in you and your personality and um, why you did things the way you did and what motivates you rather than, you know, having this very set kind of standard answer. I think, and for me, it was similar in management, and Aaron also talked about it, is um, we don't want to just see the CV, but also like why you did things, like the way you said it just now, because that shows so much about your motivation. Like if you just say, I did a semester abroad. Okay, like why did you do it? Did you want to learn a language? Do you want to go to a new setting? Like what did you take away from it? And just kind of if you flesh it out and really show what kind of individual you are, I think that helps you and just kind of, like you said, like, do I envision myself working with this person or not? And I think that's because it is such a close knit community, which values that so much. I think this is incredibly important. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So um, if I kind of look a little bit at, at, at how you um, did it, um, I'm, I'm interested to see, like, I think this is a very controversial one in, in terms of statement almost, like if you start with the quote or not, um, and you started with one, um, I like it. I don't know. Um, was there any reason why you did that? Or, or did you think it was like a good way to start into the, into the statement of purpose? Well, I think one thing I was considering when writing the statement or the essay is you have very limited time to or limited space to kind of tell who you are. So it's very important to stay very structured and because you could write so much more about yourself and for example, why you did an internship or why you went abroad. But I think you need to keep it brief to make sure that you can keep the red, um, the red line in your kind of life. If you have one, if you don't have one, that's fine as well. But, um, yeah, for me, I think that was just the easiest way to structure it. But there's no right or wrong. Um, I've seen other very inspiring essays where they didn't start with a quote. I did because I felt like it just worked for me, to be honest. Yeah. I, something which uh, just reminded me now, because you said like there is so little time, is this principle in mostly film, but also in other ones, which is called cut to the chase, which means that you start strong with like a statement or a scene or something, and then you kind of talk about yourself. And I f feel like that's something like, I don't know if that was your, your structure, uh, you can talk a little bit about what your structure was. But when I look at it, like you start off with this, what you did, like the the hackathon, and then you say, okay, like why do you want to apply to CDTM? And I think it almost reminded me a little bit of that because then you're like the, the reader is hooked, like, oh, you you did this. And then you're like, okay, so let's zoom out. Like, why do you even want to apply? So maybe let's talk a little bit about the structure. What was maybe your reasoning behind it? Like you said, Fredline. Mm -hmm. um, so when you hand in your documents, you will hand in your CV as well. So we will screen that as well. And Therefore, it's not necessary to map out every single station that you've been at um, before coming to this, to the CDTM. So I think my advice to you is to really just pick out the things that are dear to you, that um, define who you are and what you can bring to the CDTM and why you want to join the CDTM. So for example, when I wrote my statement of purpose, I was really focusing on what experiences that I have that a made me want to join the CDTM and B, that would help me to contribute to the CDTM. And this is really the experiences that I picked out. There are some other things that, you know, kind of always help you along the way and to make sure that, or not make sure, but kind of get the curiosity out of you. But um, this is just the really two things that I focus on. So making sure that I make clear why I want to um, go to the CDTM, what experiences I had to do that, and also how with these experiences I can then contribute to the CDTM. Awesome. I think that's already a very, very good place to start. I think when I look through your, your essay, uh, your statement of purpose, I think there are some things which I really want to highlight because I think you did them so well, is that you at the beginning, like said very early on, like 
what your passion is about. So, um, and I think everybody, it's not to say like you have a defined passion, which is right or wrong. Like I think uh, also in terms of entrepreneurship, like Adam and, and, and other people said, like it's not only about entrepreneurship, you can also be a centering and do academic research. Um, so it's just kind of to to show what, what you want to do and then kind of really thread it back, like always to, to that thing you said, which you're passionate about, and then you found the examples. And then something else which really struck struck for me is that you could tell that you had engaged with people from the center because you say like you're centering and the community task force. And, and my point is that most people say like, hey, go to the events, talk to people and, and just get a vibe. And, and if you still vibe with these people afterwards and you're like, I definitely want to be part of this community, then that kind of shows, right? Like, you know, it, it just shows this engagement that you went out and you did not only look at the website, like nothing wrong with that, but it, it shows like you went the extra mile, you know? And I think that's nice yeah. to see. Absolutely. So the recruiting events or the information events are really for you guys. So really for those who are interested and we really want to help you. Every time we go to kind of a lecture visit or anything like that, we always tell everyone that they can reach out to us anytime unfortunately no one has reached out to me after i did a lecture visit so maybe the guys are shy but um yeah if you are interested we are happy to help give some more insight into the ctm and yeah um help you clarify any questions and, and i think that's something i really want to show through these videos is that you guys have so much like energy and are so open and 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 really kind and it's not like i mean of course you guys everybody's super ambitious and doing incredible things as well but that doesn't mean like it's like on a pedestal and, and nobody wants to talk or something so i think um yeah i think it's, it's a bit of a step probably to reach out to somebody but as you can see everybody's super friendly and extremely happy to help um so yeah so kind of you have like in, in terms of your structure you you went with the i think the three approach so first second third which is always a, a nice way to kind of um really go with the reader throughout your story um i'm curious to kind of when you when you said okay like you can't obviously talk about everything what were you if you had to, had to abstract um for the different um for different parts, what was your your point? So, like, what did what was the the main message you wanted to get across in the first one? The main message you wanted to get across in the second one, and maybe in the third one, just to give somebody like an idea, like how could that look like? Um. So I think I really structured it first, kind of. I think um the principles called P E E or point explanation, and then example. Yes. So yes. I restructured it like that PE, I think. Um, so first, getting across my point, saying one statement. I think the first one is starting with what my main motivation is. And for me, that was the people, to meet the people, to work with the people, and really just um, yeah enjoy the ride together. And then I think my second point was that I really want to gain the tools for becoming an entrepreneur or really understanding what innovation is about. Mm -hmm. And then in my third paragraph, I was talking about that I do like to take responsibility for things I'm passionate about and that I think the CDTM is the best way to do that for me in that moment. Um, and so I try to really put the point first, explain what I mean by that, and then give an example of where I've seen it working, where I've seen it not working, where I already had the opportunity to partially do that or um, where exactly I would see myself. Awesome. I think that's a, a very good way for people, like a structured mindset in terms of like, okay, at the beginning, you hook the people with interest, then you have these three points. And then at the end, at the end, I also really like that you kind of almost summarize like what you're about, like you in, in very short sentences, you're like, okay, I'm this kind of person. This is kind of a little bit of my background, like almost something like if you remember something, if you don't remember anything about me, this is the stuff that you should remember. Like, and, and 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 I like that because it's a very kind of close. It closes it off in a very nice way, you know. Because then it's like, yeah. I'm this. I'm applying for that, and then this is where you should take me. Kind of not not really, but like you know. And it's it's like ends with a like a punchline, almost like a call to action in a certain way. And I think that's a, no, but I mean I, I think that's a good way because you read so many essays. Um, I think if you if you can finish it off um, on our essays, but statement first, then it's a it's a nice way. 
Yeah, well, I guess it worked, but I wasn't too sure when I wrote it, to be honest. I was full of doubts, um, thinking that maybe it's too structured and it's like too kind of bland in that sense. But yeah, I guess it worked, so I'm happy about that. <laughs> awesome. I think everybody always um, is in, in, in doubt. And, and and something I also want to stress again is that like a lot of people apply several times. So if you, if it doesn't work out the first time, try again because you have nothing to lose. Like people, nobody's going to judge you because you didn't get in or because you got in the second or the third time. Like I think that's also important to stress that there is no magic formula, but it's just kind of to show like how it could look like and give you some inspiration. All right. Um. So let's talk a little bit about the essay, and um, that is kind of the impossible question. <laughs> and uh, I think this is a very interesting one because I think similar to kind of case studies, almost it's like I think at least I don't know, um, what how you think and how you approach an impossible problem or an impossible question. So I think um, in in your case, um, but it's uh, different every every semester. It's that innovation in Europe is constrained due to the almost monopolist position of the big U.S. players. Should they be banned from or restricted in Europe? And um, yeah, just kind of let's talk a little bit about how did you approach that? Like, what was your first thought? Like, maybe with the impossible question, like how did you narrow the problem down? Maybe. Um, well, I think it was very difficult because um, thinking back, I only had 2,500 characters, which is, well, like three quarters of a page, almost half a page where you can write something about it. And I just restarted really um, with just dotting down my thoughts and then just writing way too much. And then that was really just kind of then showing off the fat and making sure that it fits into the character count. So I think it's good to take a broad approach in the beginning and really think about all the points you could make and all the arguments you could make. Um, and even though it doesn't ask you specifically, I think it does help if you do take a stance. So I think it's easier for you to write if you don't make a pro contra list because it's just way to, ex like these questions are designed to be way too extensive to be able to say all the pros of that or all the cons of that. Um, so if you do manage to take a stance on it, um, that just makes the writing much easier for you, in my opinion. But it really depends on the question as well. So for me, for example, with the, whether big US players should be banned or restricted, I took the stance that they should be restricted, given that, well, banning them doesn't make much sense. There are many ways that these big US players have helped, our, helped us and helped our society in some ways to yeah to information and knowledge but you know being unhinged just didn't doesn't work the way it used to yeah and I think what I also like about this question is kind of that it's still relevant right I mean some of them are are some things I mean we're talking about open AI and and how to deal with them should we restrict them should we ban them I mean it's a different topic but still like similar thought process and I think that trains you to think critically about what is going on in the world. Um, and so if I, if, if I look at, you, at, your, at your essay, there are some things which, which I think are interesting because, um, so what Arun said, and I, I really find that very fitting also, is that you should show something of yourself and your personality. And if, if I look at your kind of statement of purpose in your essay, it comes through almost like you work very numbers driven. And I mean, you have like a quantitative background, right? And I think that's then fitting to almost how how do you think, how does Elvira approach a problem? And I think that comes through very well. And that could be something very different for somebody else, but it shows part of who you are in the way you approach this. Does that make sense? I don't know. I think that's a, a very interesting one. Yeah, I think it was like, this question was actually quite a good challenge from my background. Um, I have an undergrad in economics. So thinking, of, thinking about mon monopolies and everything, that's all you talk about in microeconomics one, I think. It, at least um, at the LMU. And I think that was very interesting to then apply this principle of learning what you learned in theory and then also seeing how you would translate this into kind of some kind of policy. So when I started out my essay, I was actually like talking to friends. I think in the beginning I wrote quite an uninspired essay and I was starting to kind of think about how can I bring in a new angle to this. And then I talked to one of my friends and he was like, well, did you know that you can download all your data that Google has ever collected on you? I was like, no, I didn't know that. So when I actually, I was curious then. And 
I decided to download everything. And once the download started, I was like, huh, this takes actually quite a while. And then when I unzipped it, I realized that Google has worth seven gigabytes of data on me from every browsing history to every yeah, search query I put into YouTube or anything. So that was actually quite shocking in the beginning. Okay, so so just listening to you, I feel like there's things which we, we could take away from this already because I think first, like talking to people, like I think showing your essay or your statement of purpose to friends who are willing to <laughs> to talk with you through it and listen and read through it is I think already super nice because you come up with new ideas. And then the second one, and now that I've I've heard this, that every Centrelink has curiosity, curiosity and energy, I, I can't unsee it almost. And I think that shows like, you know, you were curious to find out like, what was it all about? And then you spun a whole storyline around this. That's super fun, I think. And 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 the third one, which, which stuck out to me was finding your angle. I think these conversations are so talked through from pretty much every basic angle, let's say, that if you can kind of manage to find a new perspective is super interesting that really catches them because you're like, oh, I haven't heard that part before. So that's also nice. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Awesome. And I think in, in, in terms of like um, how you structured it, um, I think you, I like that the reader is kind of engaged because you use rhetorical questions. So kind of like uh, every paragraph starts off with like a question, like what can we do? Where does it leave us? Um, why is it bad? And I think that's, that's interesting because it's, it's different to kind of um, if you start off, it's, it's still a point you're making, but it's more engaging. I don't know if that was a deliberate choice, but I think it's it's an it's a nice one anyway. Well, if there's one tip that I could give people who are currently writing the essays, definitely give it to friends um, to help you proofread it. Because initially I didn't have those questions. They were kind of somewhere along the text of it, but with the feedback from friends that would read proofread my texts, and even though they were not related to CDTM or anything, um, that really helped me to make it more concise, to really think about what do I want, like what point do I want to bring across? And this is kind of how I then found that structuring it into some, I guess, more provocative questions helped me to achieve that goal. But you don't have to write it like that. Um, I think mm -hmm. one of the most interesting personal states or essays that I uh, read was actually in poem. And to this day, I think that was actually a very creative way to um, to answer the question. and. I still remember it. Wow, I did not know that was possible. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. No, yeah, I, I'm not saying like you need to do it in any way, but I think um, it's okay. I think that's super fun. Like I did not know you could write a poem. So everybody who's interested in poetry, <laughs> that may be now a big thing. Um, but yeah, but I think something I, I want to maybe end this on, like I think that you said it's it's character limited. And I think if you go from it from a perspective also like, like every sentence needs to fight to be in, like, you know, it has to have some kind of value add to the conversation you're trying to open up. Um, I think that's an interesting point also, because I think, like you said, like it's very short and you're trying to give across a, a, a very concise and, and, and a thoughtful perspective. So I think yeah, that's also an interesting perspective to take up. Awesome. So, um, I don't know if you have any last application tips or anything, but I thought it's going to be super helpful. I know for a lot of people um, to just kind of listen from somebody, how they approached it and, and, and just kind of give a different perspective on it. So thanks so much, Elvira. You're welcome. Well, I think maybe my last tips would be really think about what the CDTM stands for and what you want to learn. And if you feel like this is a good fit, you should definitely apply. And if you, in the first time, don't get in, just try again. Um, it also took me two tries to get into the CDTM. And yeah, with the CDTM, I have had incredible opportunities to go abroad. And yeah, it's been really nice also to meet so many amazing, inspiring people. That sounds perfect. Thanks so much.